It's a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Built in 1981, a turning wheel with no obvious source of power. It's David Jones's fake perpetual motion machine. Jones was a one-off. He described himself as a court jester in the Palace of Science, and he said his mission was to get us all thinking more deeply about science, to smile and to wonder. And he achieved that here in Newcastle with his scientific ideas, some of which were brilliant and some of which were a little left field. I am stirring the pot, rather. And the people who know it's impossible are forced to wonder what slimy trick is David Jones playing here? David died in July. He left behind his earliest machine, and it's here at his brother Peter's house in Jesmond. It's under scrutiny by his friends and colleagues, the professor, Robin Perutz, the doctor, John Timney, and the engineer, Bill Faye. I think all this stuff here is gubbins. I, I think this is designed to mislead. These little boxes, which are in fact Coleman's mustard tins, I think, <laughs> I think the secret is there. I can imagine a mechanism working which involved the mustard tins. And uh, the mechanism would be straightforward electromagnetic force. So that's it, problem solved. Except Bill put the kibosh on his own theory two weeks ago. So we're not picking up anything there. Oh, there's a little bit there. We found no magnetic fields over here and over here. We found some in the middle, we? Didn't found we? some in the middle, and we found some down here. Oh, right. And that left me really confused. Mm -hmm. David was a research fellow at Newcastle University. He wrote Daedalus, a popular science column. I am tweeting scientists by taking their arguments and pushing them in unexpected directions. He also had brilliant ideas years ahead of their time, like chemical lasers before Ronald Reagan's Star Wars program. He debunked the theory that Napoleon had been murdered with arsenic. It was the wallpaper what done it. The arsenic he had breathed in from his wallpaper couldn't have been enough to kill him, but at least it accounts for the arsenic found in his hair without having to invent an unlikely poisoning conspiracy. His fictitious company, Dreadco, invented the self-ratcheting sock. Instead of falling down, Dreadco socks ratchet up the legs. And in fact, a president of a Chicago sock manufacturing company <laughs> wrote to him and asked if he could get the patent on this. David diplomatically declined the offer. From childhood, he was always experimenting. He loved big explosions, so on Hopping's Day, when there's lots of noise going on, my, my brother would go into the town more and uh, let off a gigantic explosion and no one would notice it. He would baffle Peter's children with his special snooker table. <laughs> <laughs> You see, there you go, right, well, you missed that one. Jones produced four fake perpetual motion machines. This one has been in the Vienna Technical Museum for 18 years. They've prompted hundreds, if not thousands, of theories. It's a rubber band heat engine. It is magnetic field. It's flywheels and low friction bearings. He drew up his agreements with the museums who wanted to have one of these machines that if it broke down within five years, he would pay the total cost of going out and repairing it. 10 years, uh, they would have to pay the flight out. After 15 years, they'd have to pay all expenses. After 15 years, that was perpetual enough, and they were on their own. <laughs> <laughs> David left clear instructions in his will that the secret, which he'd put in a brown envelope, was to be handed to Professor Martin Polyakov at Nottingham University. And today is the big day. Hello. Yeah, great to see you. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about all of this? <laughs> Quite excited, but now I'm a bit sad because I'm not sure I want to know how the machine goes. I'm not convinced that he will have written anything. It might just say boo. <laughs> 
Professor Polyakov, a renowned chemist, is a YouTube science star. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> Lying in my bath about two weeks ago, I came up with a theory about how it might work. Oh. But I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Soon, they're all trying out theories. If you were replacing a battery, the battery is likely in here. It's a really well-balanced wheel, though. Yes. yes. So it wouldn't take much to turn it. Jones had lots of wacky ideas, one of which was the self-driving bus, which the BBC filmed on this very spot 30 years ago. Meet the bus of the future. The bus that goes where you want, when you want. The expense of running buses is paying for the crew, drivers and conductors. So David's bus had no driver. The passengers had steering wheels and it went where the majority steered. David died from complications of prostate cancer. In his will, he left the secret of the machine. And he also left a very large sum of money to an independent cinema in Newcastle. We were beginning to panic a little bit and, you know, people were getting a little bit nervous about, uh, about the budgets and all of a sudden this has come along and completely transformed that, really. Time for the handover of the secret. In an old Inland Revenue envelope, David had lots of run-ins with the tax man. And the person who will be taking on the onerous responsibility of looking after the machine from now on is uh, Sir Martin Polyakov. I'm very excited and wonder whether he's going to fool us. You can hold the envelope. <laughs> I just said, no, no, no peeping. <laughs> Will the professor nod knowingly? Will he smile? Will he at least tell us what's going on? Nope, none of those. You saw there isn't another piece of paper in there. So there's plenty of text, but I'm not sure I still understand how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so even Professor Sir Martin Polyakov, scientist extraordinaire, can't work it out. Eventually, he sees light at the end of the tunnel, but it's the light of an approaching train. It's a bit like the railway junction by the castle. I know approximately the direction that goes to Scotland, but I don't know which of the tracks it's on. So what we have here is a slightly lost train. The secret's there. Martin's just got to get on the right track. Are we right in assuming that there's some form of electrical power? I think I can honestly say I'm not sure. Well, I have to say, Martin, secretly, I'm extremely pleased that the answer is, is, is somewhat opaque, because that is well in line with the sort of thing that Bro yeah. would do. So that's David Jones's fake perpetual motion machine. No longer a complete mystery. Martin has decided to keep the secret to himself, even if he does work it out. So the machine, like the man, will remain a riddle inside an enigma. I love science. I would like to share with other people the delight that I get from it. I guess as long as that wheel keeps on turning, we'll never know the real secret. Mm -hmm.